This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at this PS4 Slim SAE 002 revision motherboard and uh, yes it's got quite <laughs> sometimes you look at these machines and you just wonder what the f*** is going on with them and how the hell they've ended up in the state they've got in because this has come in a pile uh, of jobs which get sent to me every now and again and uh, these machines have all sorts wrong with them and sometimes you look at them and you go how the friggin hell have you managed to do that well, this is one of those instances, and of course, if you've seen the title of the video, you will know that this is an issue with the hard disk drive connector, the SATA connector, which connects the 2.5 inch hard disk drive, or SSD, if you've been upgrading, to your PS4. Anyway, by the by, um, just di digressing for a second, um, welcome back, it's been a while, and um, to be honest, if you don't want to listen to this next sort of minute or two, if you take a look in the description, there'll be a timestamp as to where we actually start the repair. If, however, you are interested, um, then just listen on. Um, it's been an interesting couple of months, to say the least. It's been difficult. Um, those of you who follow the channel and who know me will know that I had my second daughter. And if, if this was hard enough with one toddler to look after, who is now three, um, then, yeah, life just got a whole lot more difficult, really. Um, that in combination with my shifts at work changing. So before I was on a, a four on four off, which meant I had four days, you know, free to get through this stuff. That's now sadly changed. It's now gone back to a Monday, Friday, nine to five. So I purely have weekends and obviously family life has to come in some point in that weekend. However, that said, um, you know, it's been a case of when I've had time to come up here to do things, I've just had to get them done. I haven't really had time to do much filming. Which has all proven very difficult. Um, and then to just top it all off, um, as if that wasn't enough really. Um, I've had uh, a few health issues with uh, with my heart recently. So um, that's currently under investigation to see if they can work out what's going on and why. Um, to be honest, I think it's one of these that I've... In having to scale back what I do, because I just haven't got enough time, I've realised that basically for the last couple of years I've done nothing but flog myself to death um, you know just hammered everything really hard on top of working 44 hours in a four day period I've then gone and worked myself solid in here and I've I've kind of done that for two years now and it's just you can't do it you know it's basically nature's little way of going you've got to behave yourself mate you know and, and that's it so you know, I am still around, I'm still here, I'm still doing things. Uh, I'm just trying to take things a lot easier than what I have been doing. And, and to be honest, since I have been doing that, things have improved. They're not perfect, they're not right, but they're better than they were. So, you know, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed those marvellous guys and girls at the, at the hospital and who are involved with the NHS can work out what, uh, what my issue is and why it's happening. Um, but anyway, I digress. I'm still here, I'm still, I'm still alive for now. Also, just as a side note, there are a couple of videos that I was in the middle of doing um, ages ago. The, the machines that are fixed, that are done, um, I'm halfway through editing the videos. Um, they obviously were filmed a lot, uh, quite a while ago before this one. In fact, they were, I think they were filmed at the end of last year. We're in May now. So, <laughs> May 2019, these were back in 2018, these were before Christmas. Um, but we might as well get them uploaded and, and edited, but the time stamps may seem a little bit or a little bit weird but you know they're good repairs they're good videos so they'll be interesting for you to watch um but uh yes so we'll get those uploaded anyway so anyway i digress welcome back if you've skipped ahead and uh this machine does indeed have that hard disconnector issue and ooh, the, the mind boggles you, you'll see for yourself when we take a look but essentially look at this so we have a hard disconnector that looks actually in one piece Okay, so we have a hard drive connector. Okay, that actually looks perfectly fine, perfectly serviceable. Doesn't look like it's damaged at all. Doesn't look like it's been damaged in any way. And there's some telltale marks around here. 
I mean, I've not fired this machine up. I don't know what it does. So, it, it could be doing anything for all I know. But anyway, so you can see here, there's some scratches in the ground plane for whatever reason. What they've been trying to do here, I don't know. Why they've been trying to do it, I don't know. Like I said, I haven't started this machine up yet. So, if it's throwing an error code, if it can't access storage for some reason, therefore somebody's been trying to do something with it. But you can see there, look, what the f*** has somebody been doing here? What have they been doing? There's a trace repair here. Um, I just don't know. I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Look, you see, you see this here. <laughs> what? Why? What the hell have they been doing? Why have they been doing it? Ah, oh, I mean, that's going, that's going to Southbridge, isn't it? If you follow it down there, we're losing focus a little bit. Da -da -da. Yeah, it's going under the Southbridge to the media con. I don't know what sits on that line. What does sit on that line? That's from the Blu-ray drive. That is from the Blu-ray drive. Yes, it is. That's going from the Renaissance, I see. So the lines that have been cut through... So the SATA header has been well and truly bodged. So, yes, so these lines here on the bottom come from the Renaissance controller. So they go through these vias. Yeah, so they go from the Renaissance controller. They've been completely bodged through. And then you've got some more bodging going on here. And then to the hard disk connector. Uh, yeah, where somebody's been doing some very creative soldering. Oh, do you know? Do you know? I, I said to myself the other day because obviously I've got a load of these, and I've also got a load of thermal paste all over the bench for some reason. So I presume somebody's been having a happy party with the, uh, the thermal paste on this machine, as per bloody usual. But anyway, I said to myself the other day because I have a massive pile of these to get through, and the guys wanting them done. And I'm sat there thinking, right, I'm just going to have to go through these, be brutal. You know, if anything's been completely fucked about, I'm not I, I'm not going to touch it. Now, you know, you haven't got the time for it. Don't do it. And I haven't even started this machine up to tell if it works yet. And I'm going to try and repair it. I and mean, what the hell am I doing? And what... I'm doing this for you guys, you know. I'm doing this because I think it might be interesting for you. Not because it's interesting for me. <laughs> Because, frankly, I'd rather not touch it. But, you know, sod it. For a penny and for a pound. Right, so we can see there there's a bodge on those vias. Which, actually, it looks to me as though... I don't think they've been cut through as such. I think they've just been... For whatever reason, they've been stripped back. Why has somebody done that? Why would somebody do that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Why would somebody do that? The mind boggles. It really does. Right. So this is all going to have to be um, covered up with some conformal coat. What we will do is we'll just strip down here. Some of the um, some of the solder mask from the trace is a little bit further down. Then we can do a continuity test, and then we'll just see whether there is any continuity down there or not. So this is all going to get insulated back up anyway. This kind of leaves us with not much choice because everything is just a bloody mess. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's see what we have, what we haven't got then, eh? So, up here, where those cuts are through the traces, well, somebody's at least soldered back in or tried to. Okay, we have continuity there. We have continuity there. So those two traces are indeed intact. They're okay. They're fine. Good. Right, so we don't have to worry about those. As such, let's just clean this trace up as well. I think we nick that one. Okay, so yeah, those are fine. 
Um, <laughs> what the chuff have they been doing then? What have they been doing? So, where's my conformal coating pen? Because we might as well cover those up now if we know they're good. There's no point in um, messing around too much. So, this is uh, Chemtronics, MG Chemtronics, uh, MG Chemicals as they are these days. It's an overcoat pen. It's in green. And the part number for this one is 419D PGR. And essentially what this does is if you've got any naked exposed copper on the board there like this, you come in here with this stuff, and it's magic. Well, it is if you don't clog the end of the nozzle up, because somebody didn't clean it last time they used it. Did they, Andrew? No, Andrew, they didn't. No, that's right, Andrew. You're an idiot, aren't you? Yes, Andrew, I am. Right, so, let's give this a shake. Let's uh, fill these little inspection holes in, and we'll fill this damaged area in, and we'll fill over these traces, because, you know, they don't need to be there. We don't need to be seeing them. Okay, so that's that. That's that done, so we can rule out any of that shenanigans. So, the next thing we're going to do, we're not going to worry about those traces for now. What we are going to worry about is the soldering that's been going on here. What the bloody hell have they been doing? Right, so, <laughs> that's a common theme for this video, I've noticed already. What the bloody hell have they been doing? How many times have we said that now? We probably should put a bullshit bingo counter at the bottom of the screen, just so we can count how many times we say what the hell have they been doing. If you're playing along at home, put the answer in the bottom of the description. <laughs> Oh, the answer in the comments, sorry. Put the answer in the comments. It can be fun. My little daughter likes, uh, on Netflix, it's Charlie's Colour Form City, I think it is. Annoying little git. Cartoon character just runs around and... Well, it's a bit trippy, but anyway, she loves it to bits. But um, on one episode, we were watching it with the missus while, while she was sat, you know, watching the TV. And it was like, I'd noticed how many times the guy said the word pancakes. I think it was 67 times in a in an 11 minute episode. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I am that sad. So anyway, so let's just go and clean this up. So what we're going to do, we're going to come in here with some desolder braid. Let's clean these connections up. Let's see why somebody's been bodging these together. Let's see what they've left us with underneath. Probably bugger all to solder to. You do just have to wonder. I mean, obviously somebody's been messing around with this. Um, for some reason, they've obviously suspected this hard disconnector may be a bit of a problem for them. Entirely sure why, but there we go. There's something sticking out the end there that looks like a pin. Somebody's just smushed the pins over, haven't they? They've folded all the pins over. For some reason. They've folded all the pins over. Let's have a look on the bottom of another one. Indeed. Those groups are common. Okay, so that's not so bad. So, so essentially, these three are joined, these three are joined, and these three are joined. And then you have these. So, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Let's just clean this up as best we can. Let's just clean all this up. <laughs> right. Right, well, I'm just going to go and IPA this, so you might lose the visibility of the board for a short while while I just try and clean this off. 
So, we can get a good idea as to just what somebody's been up to. Try and work out why, because the connector itself looks absolutely fine. The connector itself looks like it's in one piece. Um, which makes it all the more odd, really, why the hell somebody's been around here with a soldering iron. I really don't get... Ah, oh, Taking our conformal coat off. I'll have to put that back now. Oh, well. <laughs> it takes uh, around 24 hours to cure completely, so... If you go working around it, then you can... Uh, straight after you can lift it off. By the way, if you do need to get it off at some point in future, it's not a... It's permanent while you leave it, but if you ever need to get it off, you just apply a little bit of heat with a... The heat gun. You know, an air station, an air wand, hot air wand, PCB rework gun. It soon comes off. So if you do need to get to what was underneath it at any point, then it's easy enough to do. This makes it very, very useful. So. Okay, so there is a little bit of, of mask damage there between that left hand and centre portion. But it looks like the border's still intact between the two, so it doesn't look as though they're, they're connected in any way. Sure enough, there's no continuity there, so that's fine. Or there to that group either, so that's absolutely fine. That's okay, that's fine, that's good. Can live with that. Okay. So it would appear then what we've got here is ground, ground, and that'll be power. And then obviously we have our signal pins here. So they have. They've. It would appear they've broken some of them, and then some of them have been bent through the holes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Whatever. So first thing we'll do. We'll put the uh, the ground anchors back in. So we'll just flux these back up. And then we'll put the power and ground pins back. So we'll just put some flux over the top of these and we'll go in with the big tip. This is some uh, Kester branded leaded solder we've got here. Nothing but the best. These crappy playstations. Okay, so... <laughs> It's a bit of a waste, but you know, there you go. Yeah, I don't know where this lad gets these from. I have no idea. He just, they, they turn up on a, you know, just a pile of them. And they're always crap. <laughs> they're always garbage. They always take ages to fix. And they're always, they always seem to be that you fix one problem with them and you find more problems you know you, you you test them and you find other things after you've already fixed something you know you might find one that's a right git and you'll eventually get it fixed and you'll go oh yes you know you'd be pleased with yourself for 30 seconds until you've put a game disc in and realize the disk drive doesn't work or you know, plug a controller in to realise that the controller doesn't sync to it. So. Oh yes, lots of lots of fun to be had with this pile of crap, but which is kind of what's making life difficult at the minute. Because, like I say, I'm trying to rationalise work, not uh, not make more of it. So, as we can see there, now we have that resoldered. We have that resoldered now, so that's looking better than it was. I'm just going to get rid of the flux residue again. You know, the we'll ultrasonic these boards, so they'll all get cleaned anyway. But just makes working on them a little bit nicer, a little bit easier if you just clean up as you go. Doesn't have to be perfect, you know, just something that means you're not going to put your glove down on the board to get hold of it and end up with a sticky finger full of flux residue or out like that, you know. So they are there looking a little bit more presentable, which is good. We'll fill that damaged solder mask in around the edge, but there's no 
There's no continuity there between the centre power pins and those ground areas, so that's fine. So now we've got to do these. So you do despair sometimes. You really do. So why somebody's been resoldering the connector, I don't know. Why somebody's been messing around with half of this stuff, I don't know. I guess we'll find out soon enough. So, we'll feed some solder in from the back. Down the hole. Lovely jubbler. Probably got enough on the iron to be honest with that one. Yeah. Okay, so we've got some bridging going on there with that back one. I think these are the ground if I remember rightly. So anyway, we'll just clean that centre part pin up there because it's Oh, I see. Somebody's bent the pin over, haven't they? Ah, somebody's bent the pin over. <laughs> Why have they done that? That's stupid. Oh, God. Trouble is, now they've bent that pin over there. Like that. It's very close to that other pin. Right, well, we're going to have to do some continuity checking there just to make sure we don't have anything bridging across there, because if we do, that's obviously going to cause us a problem. So, meters in continuity mode, one. Pin on there, another pin on there. No continuity, open line. That's fine. Yeah, these three are ground, aren't they? I think. Indeed, they are. Yeah, so these three outer pins here are ground. Yeah, these are data. So we don't want them talking. So that's good, that's fine, that's alright. Okay, so now that's been cleaned up, we're just going to clean this flux off again. As best we can. Right, next job. So, connector is okay. It's all been resoldered. No problem there. So the next job is to do this. Yep, the, the fun part, shall we say. Because these are tiny. These are tiny traces. It looks like the bottom two are actually intact. So we may get away with just having to do the top two. If we're lucky. So I'm just going to go and scrape away. Got the conformal coat. Okay, so I'm just going to expose the copper from the trace underneath. We do that just by lightly scratching back on it. 
I'd recommend you actually use a fiberglass pencil for this rather than what I'm doing. You can do it with a Stanley blade, and if you know what you're doing and you're careful, then you know there's no problem doing it with a Stanley blade. But it is rather easy to cut through the traces if you're not used to doing it like that. And then obviously you cause more more damage. Again, it's not irreparable if you cut through a trace. You know, it's just more work if you do. So, want to be be wary of there. So the bottom two actually look intact. So they don't look like they're broken at all. Um, if in doubt, what you can do is you can apply a little bit of flux. We're going to have to apply flux to this area anyway. But what you can do is you can go in with a little bit of flux on an iron and you can go in with a bit of solder and you can just tin over the top. So a little bit like what somebody's done a little bit further up there for whatever reason. You see, you can just go over the top of the... Uh, of the trace. What we will do is we'll do the same up here as well just to tin these traces up. That's going to help us get these new wires in position a little bit easier. Okay so these are going to be tiny these. This is going to be tiny tiny work. Now then for those of you who remember we did a video right at the start of 2018 on the original on the original Xbox, the OG Xbox, which had an EO7 hard disk drive timeout caused by very similar trace damage on the IDE header for the hard disk. That was horribly fiddly stuff to do. Pop a link to the description of that one. No, I'll pop a link to that one in the description even, if I think on. If you want to watch that, it's quite an interesting video. And the scale of that, tiny work, tiny work. And of course, the board, after all that time, had started to corrode out. So, let's be really careful with it. But we got there in the end. We fixed it, and it all worked absolutely beautifully afterwards. In fact. It's still here. It's actually in the cabinet. Off to my left. That machine at the moment. And then I have another machine, which is at home. That's also featured on the channel. Another OG Xbox. Uh, somebody had put a really bad soft mod on it and then skipped it. <laughs> to recover it, revert it completely back to stock. Hard modded it. Did a hard disk drive upgrade on it. Quite a few videos on that one actually. I think the original Xbox is my favourite console, you know. If somebody had to ask me, you know, come on Andrew, nail your colours to the mast, mate, which which console are you most fond of? The OG Xbox, I think. Because at the time, it was quite a radical departure from what we know now, really. In fact, you could say... It laid the foreground for essentially what the PS4 and the Xbox One are these days. X86 architecture, off the shelf CPU. All that kind of good stuff. Obviously, you know, I had a hard disk at the time, which, again, you know, bore the forefront for modern consoles. Okay, so that choice is going nowhere, so that's fine. I always loved the Sega Saturn as well. The Sega Saturn was, was amazing. I loved that thing. 
still have one. A Gen 1 back at home. One with the access lights and things like that. Again, that's another cool machine. Far better than the PS1, but fortunately, <sighs> we all know how that ended. But uh... anyway, I digress. So we're, we're, we're moving along here at a, a happy rate of knots. So just going to uh, offer this next wire up. This is tiny. This is. Oh. This is, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you do stuff like this, you realise just how steady your hand is. Right, so those are largely in place now. Okay, so let's just get a, another cotton bud here. Some more IPA. Let's just go over that little region. Let's get rid of the flux so we can see what we've got. And we can give everything a nudge. Make sure it's not moving, make sure it's not loose. Make sure it is absolutely solid before we do anything else. I think I have broken the top wire, which is, you know, annoying, but we'll sort it out in a second if we have. Indeed, we have. Slightly. It's come off. <sighs> this is the problem. So tiny, it's just I'm trying to do this stuff, you know. It's... it's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky stuff to do. Especially when you're talking about something so... So fine, you know, it's... It'll look fairly big on the camera. This is just it. It'll look fairly big under the microscope. I tell you what. If ever you do go in one of these, just be mindful next time just to take a look at the picture of these traces. You'll see exactly what I mean about why this is difficult to do. You can see why somebody thought sod it and just nailed it back together with a hole on and, and left it be. Because without a scope, this will be incredibly difficult. So, let's take a look then. Let's see what we've got continuity-wise. So, we should have no continuity from top to bottom. We don't. We have OL open line on the meter, which means we have no connection between top and bottom trace, which is good. So let's go from this side to this side. 
continuity. Let's go from this side to this side. Continuity. And again, you know, these these are looking one piece. Anyway, so they're fine. So the trace repair is complete. Happy days. So what we'll do now then is we'll go over and we'll overcoat these things. I may have to do this off camera because the scope is slightly in the way. Might be alright actually. We might be okay. Okay, we'll just fill these back in. And any other areas that are exposed because we don't want them rotting out over time because they will. That's how the uh, OG Xbox we mentioned earlier ended up in here because somebody inadvertently nicked across a trace way, way back. And over time, the moisture got to it, corroded it out until eventually it didn't work anymore. Sad but true. Okay, so that's that then. So those traces and everything else are now repaired. Just cleaning this overcoat pen off so I don't end up with the same problem I did last time. I've never forgotten to clean that pen off. That's, that's bizarre. Oh well. Anyway, a solder whisker on here as well from somewhere. Got rid of that. Okay, so there we are. So this is our connector now. We've, oh yeah, we said we were going to fill those in, didn't we? We said we were going to fill those in. We will. So, yeah, there. Couple there. The one up the back. There. Okay, everything else looks alright. Not too worried about anything else, really. Everything else looks good. So, just clean that off again now. <laughs> to clean that overcoat pen off again. Right, okay. So, as we were mentioning, here we go then. So, everything here looks okay. Ground power ground okay. We've insulated those nicks in the solder mask. And down to the actual traces themselves for the SATA bus. Here we go. So that's the bit we had to scratch back to verify continuity across that break there. That's fine. We've insulated that break up. That's okay. Again, a couple of nicks around this these this data pair here. That's good. Coming down here, obviously this is our repair to those traces. We know that's good. And insulated up so in theory the SATA bus on this machine now should be fixed should be absolutely fine and dandy shouldn't be a problem with it now at all so hopefully hopefully this will work so let's stick it back in the chassis let's give it a test see what we get oh, I'll tell you what I will do there before I do that <laughs> what I will do before we do that why has somebody been messing around with SATA on here uh, let's check. I wonder if it's because the disk drive hasn't been working. I wonder if it's because the disk drive hasn't been working. Let's just check these two fuses up here before we go anywhere. Because ultimately somebody's been in here fiddling for some reason. And I'm only going to have to put it back together to find out what the original error code was. Now that we know... <laughs> the bus is in one piece. If it was the disk drive, let's just take a look and make sure the fuses are good. It could be something as daft as this. Okay, we have continuity on that fuse. Continuity on that fuse. Okay, maybe not. Okay, right, well, we'll plug it in, see what we get. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, we'll have a working PlayStation. Right, okay, then, ladies and gentlemen, so we have our PS4 reassembled now. And as we can see, the uh, white light is on. And uh, if we go up here to the TV, we can see, look, that we have safe mode. So this has got a test hard drive in it, obviously, because, like I said, these are just a, a mass purchase from somewhere. Uh, they don't tend to come with any hard drives in them, so... 
I just to put a test one in for now. We can see it started up to safe mode, and we've got the cannot start the PS4 message, which is actually a very good sign, because, in fact, if it couldn't see the hard disk storage, then, of course, we would get the uh, cannot access system storage message, and we'd be prompted to shut the PS4 down and reconnect the hard drive. So the fact we've got this far is encouraging. So we have, as you saw a minute ago, a USB stick connected to the front USBs, with the system software on so we'll try and see now if we can get this installed and in fact like i said it is looking good it's looking as though it's going to work so i think it's just a case now of seeing whether there's um any other particular faults with this machine or whether we are indeed good so let's remember that we had uh, a couple of issues obviously we had the soldering on the um on the header um, for the SATA connector, which was absolutely horrible, which we repaired. And of course, then we also had some destroyed traces between the Renaissance IC and the Southbridge, which of course would have meant our disk drive didn't work. So we are being prompted that the PS4 will be initialized. And that's running through and doing. So it looks like it can indeed see the hard drive. So at this point, it's all looking really good. So once we get it back into the OS, of course, we can try and put a disc in and we'll see if we get any joy, see if we get anything to play. If we do, then we are all good to go, of course. So that does beg the question of, however, why was somebody going in there fiddling about? Were they just trying to give it a clean? Were they trying to repaste it? Or was there a, a deeper underlying issue somewhere that we've yet to find? So it's preparing to update the system software. So we'll just leave this to run through, just so you can see exactly what's going on. Obviously, if the you know if there's any error messages pop up or anything onto what happens at any point, then of course you're going to see it. For now, though, everything looks all right. So it's going through as I would expect it to do. So it was on system software 6.2 before. Um, we are going to I think 6.51 is the latest version of my USB stick. I'm not entirely sure what the latest version um, is. To be honest with you, I'm not sure what the latest, latest version is. It's been a while since I've fired mine up at home. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly aware of what the latest uh, all singing, all dancing version is. That may still very, very well be the latest one, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's going away and doing its thing, so. We do have the system software update screen loading up now, so this is where it boots from hard disk, so it looks like it is working. So it's whether the update now goes through. The fact it started is, again, a good sign, because usually with any sort of disk-based issues like uh, 4218-6 and anything like that, usually you'd get that right at the start of the process. So the fact we've got 15-16% of the way through is encouraging. That's pleasing. So we'll just leave this to run through. Like I say, I'm not going to skip anything. I'm not going to skip bits. I'm not going to chop bits out. You can see what it's doing. So we're past a third of the way. Fifty percent halfway there. Sixty-five percent, two thirds of the way there now. Sixty-six,
92. So yeah, we're nearly there now. Nine, one hundred. Okay, looks like we're going down for reboot. So with any look now, we should start to see this thing boot up into the OS, up to the dashboard. With any luck, hoping so. Anyway, come on, baby, boot for me. Okay, it looks like it's rebooting again here. Okay, we have sync, updating system storage. That's usually what it does, and then it'll go, it'll reboot again, and we should go into the OS. All being well. The fact it's doing what it's doing is encouraging. It shows it's, uh, it's working away as it should do at the moment. Okay, there we go. So that's now booting directly to the OS from hard disk. As we can see, we have the PlayStation logo. Have the controller connected via USB, because of course this is going to try and go through first run once it boots. And here we are, we're into OS. Excellent news. So we're not out of the woods just yet. So let's uh, try and connect controller. That's working. So that's good. So we'll just skip through this bit. I don't need to know this bit really. Okay. The time and date aren't correct. But, uh... Okay, there we go. We're into the OS. Excellent. Okay, so that's the first part of this done. And the first part of it working, so that's that's um, a reassuring sign, shall we say. So let's try put a disc in here. Let's see what that does. So okay, are we ready? Okay, well it's taken the disc. We can see the little. Uh, Disc read icon up there in the far corner. Doesn't sound like it's trying to read it. It sounds like um, it's clicking away. Unrecognised disc, yeah. So it sounds like it's having some trouble trying to read the disc. What we'll do is, um, like I said, this isn't uncommon with these machines that I tend to get given from uh, from this lad. Um, what we will do is, we will take it apart. We'll give the laser a clean, and we'll see if that. Often, um, like I say, this this happens. We'll try DVD in there, but I don't expect this to work because you need an internet connection after first run to install the software. But we'll just see if it picks up. See if it picks the disc up, shall I? Yeah, you can hear that. Yeah, the the disc drive isn't happy. It's not accepting this now. It's not feeding. So it would appear that the uh, the mechanism, the drive mechanism, is out of a line. So what we'll have to do with this one, we'll have to uh, crack the drive apart, realign all the. Probably somebody's just ragged the disc out of it, more than likely, which is why it's happened. So. We'll go away, we'll clean the laser, we'll sort the drive mechanism, we'll plug it back in, fire it back up and uh, we'll see what we get. But it's looking good at this point, we're into OS, so it would appear that it would appear we're, we're looking fairly good. Uh, like I say, it wouldn't have gone through the system software installation if it couldn't talk to the Renaissance. Uh, it wouldn't have gone through, it would have thrown a 35888-2 error back at us. So the fact we're in the OS and the fact that, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm happy it's working, it's just the disk drive that's... Uh, being a git, like I said, most likely because somebody's ragged a disc out of it without the... I don't know why people don't um, use the eject screw on the top. They insist on sort of dismantling it all and taking the top of the drive off and then just knocking everything out of alignment. Anyway, we'll shut it down, we'll go do that and uh, 
we'll come back and we'll show it working. All right, Kevin, ladies and gentlemen, so just to prove a point for the testing, because I'm running out of time here today, I've manually fed a disc into the console. So I'm going to start it via the control pad. Okay, so you can see it's booting there. You can hear the disc. Well, maybe you can hear the disc. I don't know if you can hear the disc from, from this microphone, but the disc is spinning up. And we're booting up there. Simply just to prove a point on the testing so I can get this video done and wrapped up today rather than having to bugger about tomorrow. You can see there now, look, we have a FIFA 18 logo. I think this, this game does take a while to install, actually, if I remember rightly. But you can see there, we have the application. It's detected the game disk. We have the tile and everything and the identifier, uh, the name all loaded up there. And you can see there now that scroll bar, that status bar is now starting to work its way along. So we should be okay. Like I said, this, this title does take a while to, to go through and do its thing. So uh, anyway, we'll wrap up while we're waiting for it. So what did we do there today? Well... It's been a while, but um, we're back and we have this sorted out. <laughs> um, so essentially what this one was, is it had been, in fact, on the video when I mentioned earlier on that was one in this pile that had been forced to square via PC World. Yeah, th this one's been to PC World's Repair Centre. Um, <laughs> quite what the hell they've done with it, I don't know. But there we go, it's got holes in it. But as you can see, today what we did was we took a look at the hard disk drive SATA connector. Somebody had made a right hand fist of soldering it. Um, quite why they've been trying to solder it, I don't know. They've been messing around with the pins, folding them over and everything else. And it just, it just looked like one big mess. But in the end, we've managed to resolve that. And of course, the hole that was created, presumably by some careless tech, um, not looking what he's doing with his implements and his tools, uh, managed to gouge out a couple of traces uh, between the Renesas and the MediaCon or the Southbridge to you and me, um, you know, which would have rendered the disk drive completely useless. As you can see, that's now working. And also the trace damage and the soldering, well, the crappy soldering on the on the on the hard disk drive SATA header would have meant that that probably wouldn't have worked too well either. There's a reason it's here in this pile because he goes through them and he tries to get them working. Um, so evidently this one. This one hasn't been working, and uh, when he's taken it apart and he's seen the damage, that's why it's uh, it's ended up in that pile that I've got here. So, um, you know, like I said, they don't all come here. If he goes through them and if he gets them working, then obviously we don't get them. We only get the ones he can't get working. So, this one obviously had a few a few deeper underlying issues, which we now appear to have resolved. So, as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up and uh, drop a Drop a big like on the video for me. It, it, it goes a long way to uh, helping the channel grow more than you'd imagine. Obviously, for those of you with your own channels, you'll understand the significance of that like button down there. Um, for those of you who don't, and who, who aren't sure exactly what's going on, uh, the like button essentially, um, the more likes uh, the video gets in a certain space of time and the ratio of likes to dislikes, etc., etc., um, all affects the YouTube algorithm and affects who the video is shown to, who it's shared with, who it's suggested to and everything else. So the more likes I can get on this video from the different people, uh, the more people will see it and the more it will help the channel grow. So I would thank you very much, like I say, if you've enjoyed it or you found it useful, if you would give us a like. If you haven't already subscribed, um, I know it's been a while and there hasn't been many videos going up on here lately, but hopefully that will change over the next few weeks and we can get back to uh, getting some... Uh, consistent uploads going again um, but yeah um, like I say if you haven't subscribed there is over 100 videos on the channel all very similar things um, mostly playstations xboxes and things like that um, there's a few macbook videos one or two iphone ones as well not that I work on iphones in particular um, but all of which you know in the majority is component level repair diagnosis and obviously showing you what we do um, so if that's your sort of thing then feel free to check out other videos and like I say keep uh, to keep tabs of what we do and to uh, 
um, and be alerted as to when we get any more videos if you hit that subscribe button and, and ding that bell next door to it then um, likewise you know that would be very much appreciated as well if you've got any comments any suggestions any questions then feel free to pop them in the comments below i do sort of peruse here now and again and i, I will pick up and i will answer where i can I do get a lot of comments and a lot of suggestions and everything else uh, across all my videos. So, you know, if there's a delay in me replying, then, you know, don't take it. In fact, I'm ignoring you. It's just the fact there's so much to do to go through and, and I have so little time. I just haven't maybe seen it yet. Um, but likewise, if you're in the UK um, or the EU and you're in need of a repair of your own console, then feel free to drop me an email to my business email address. That's ytandrewpaul at outlook.com. We also ship components for repairing these games consoles worldwide. So even if you're in the States, etc., and you're trying to find a part, maybe it's a really obscure part um, that you've lost off a motherboard, like a capacitor or something like that, then feel free to drop us a message. We may be able to supply you one um, for a very good price. We have plenty of donors. We have plenty of new stock components and things like that. There's not much we can't get our hands on and get to you. Um, if you need it so by all means give us a shout if there's anything you're struggling to find that you really need um, yeah so thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen like I say I'm apo my apologies it's been so long um, to getting a, a new video out to you I, I do appreciate my subscriber base a hell of a lot it still goes up you know I don't think we've had a video for is it three four months now um, and still that subscriber base number keeps growing you know and the, and the guys and girls uh, that are there already haven't given up and they haven't left and, and that is very very much appreciated i thank you all for your persistence in sticking with me through what has been um quite a tricky period uh, and continues to be a tricky period so uh, thank you very much for your support on that one so thank you very much ladies and gentlemen i don't think this is going to finish installing before we get to the end of this is it we're just going to be rambling on forever um but as you can see there it is installing it is going through happily so uh yes so i, I think without further ado um it's time to wrap this up so from me from the playstation uh from the sata header <laughs> and the sata bus uh tracers it's uh it's a very good afternoon to you all thank you very much for watching and we'll see you see you on the next video very shortly so for me it's bye bye funny Many thanks for watching then ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate and of course subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We have plenty more content on there and there's lots more to come.